Volkswagen Transporter T6 or Mercedes V-Class? That is the question here today on Autogefühl, your number one resource for in-depth car reviews and your number one community to discuss cars. With Thomas and this small comparison test video, we are going to present you both of the cars. And then we'll discuss later on which one would you actually go for, which one I would actually go for. And of course, in this case, it will be a question of the budget I can tell you so far. So enjoy these two cars and then give me your opinion about these. Starting with the exterior here, you see this B-color scheme, white on the top, red on the bottom, but there are also other color combinations available. If you're not the fan of white and red, maybe it's not fitting to your favorite football club, or maybe it does exactly fit to your favorite football club. And you see, we also got a stronger lower front here, and that is all in this top level we have in here of the car. The headlights have been sharpened in comparison to the T5 version, but you already see the basic principle of the car remained the same. It has form follows function. We first look at the interior aspect and then we design the car on the exterior according to this. And so they could only change some details, for example, this sharper design line here on the front of the hood or the sharper headlights that the car is a little bit more modern. There has been a lot of discussion if this is the right choice actually, but I think it is because what is the main target group for a new car? The existing customers of the predecessor. And you can see here, the trunk is still suitable for a lot of suitcase and you can store them right up. But then comes one of the main new features. I put one suitcase out here. Um, because formerly in a T5, it was actually a hassle to change the rear bench or to slide it. And here it's kind of easy. You just have to remove this one here. And then there are actually two strips and one of them, here the number one. Um, let me see which, is, which one is what. Which one? Uh, no. Number one, if you pull it even tight, this one actually can flip the bench totally. That you maybe can, for example, put your surfboard in there. I'm not putting it all the way because I can do it back there now. So loading a surfboard or skiers or whatever now. Strip number two, and this one is then sliding the rear bench. Get to the interior of the generation 6 special edition and look here this is really the high class interior then special in red you don't have to pick it in red actually there are also other colors possible for example just plain black and you see this is still black plain plastic here but the steering wheel looks quite fancy quite modern volkswagen style more details to the cockpit you see this in new perspective here for you now I think it's really attracting a lot of the attention when the motion with the red styling here. I like it when something is different actually. It's not the most modern Volkswagen GPS unit here, however, like let's say the second uh, most modern. Also really with the proximity sensor that the touch screen is activated here with the different buttons. And I can also use the controls at the side. The GPS does quite fine job and it can already be controlled iPad or iPhone alike with zooming in out, oh, that's also possible. A very nice solution is when I 
turn the volume up and down on the right upper part. That's actually a button I can press. This is a speech amplifier. So, you see here, when you put the door back again, now, there's also this electronic sliding back, this soft, close touch. It's not the completely electric version. Again, the same with the hatch. Now it's sliding open. And this is the beautiful new interior, same style on the seats with Alcantara on the inside and the Fox leather on the outside. Again, I must say the best solution. All seats, you always see this ISO fix uh, signs in every seat. They can, of course, be fitted up with a child seat then. So, and then let's, let me get inside because this is really very interesting. First of all, the rear bench. This is really standard from the lowest trim level then. And then you can optionally pick these different single seats. And the seating position has definitely improved. You see it's very upright again, a lot of head space here as well. And you just have a lot of space here. The seats on the outside, I think, well, the middle seat is also, also quite comfortable, I think, so it's no problem to sit with three adults here in the back. This one would be an optional, very comfortable armrest. And if you now think about, you put this, your arm here, and uh, maybe your shoes, I'm putting it to the side now, that they don't make it dirty. No, if you put them on, on, on the seats, then you can really be like a boss here. You see, these are the sunshades. They can look for me put manually up. It's very good, especially if you have children in here that they not have to have the air conditioning all the time. I mean, this is already protecting. But of course, there's also the separate air conditioning here in the ceiling. And also new, we got LED lights here now, which of course save some energy. There's also a second sliding door available here. So if you want to jump straight from the one to the other part, this is also possible then, then with this car here. Have you searched the fuel cap, left side, then right here. This new add blue stuff, you have to refill um, about, I think, every 6,000 kilometers or something like that. It's an edit uh, additive, and then normal diesel here for the DDI. But there are also, of course, the petrol engine available. Let's look at the engine. 2 liter TDI, 204 horsepower, auto fuel hydraulic damper check, everything is all right. You see there is not a huge cover here and there's also limited space for the engine. This TDI is also available with 150 horsepower and well also two even weaker diesels, but I would not go for them unless you just want to drive the car alone. Most of the time you got some heavy load in there and then you better take the 150 or 204 horsepower diesel. And there's also the petrol engine available, also with two liter displacement. Same horsepower figures, 150, uh, 150 and 204. But the petrol engines are not available in either weaker, in either weaker versions. And now let's drive the all-new Volkswagen Transporter, the T6. And they... Okay, put the GPS to mute so you can hear me better. Here we're driving the top diesel, 204 horsepower, the TDI, 2 liter TDI. And I can already say now, I can really recommend it. It's the fitting engine for this car because it's a heavy car, it's a big car, it's a long car and you most of the time want to have a lot of stuff in the back here, be it people or be it luggage. So you should really have a stronger engine. For example, now we're going uphill. I feel it has enough torque. I just have to push the throttle just a little bit down. That's perfectly fine. And I would be struggling with, with the lower engines. Actually, the 150 horsepower diesel, I think this will also be suitable still. But then below that, there are also two small diesels. I would not go for them. And about the petrol engines, actually there are also 150 and 204 horsepower available, as I said earlier. I think the bigger petrol engine would also work. And it depends on how far, how long you actually go. If you're going over 20,000 kilometers a year, then you should probably go for the diesel. About driving, in comparing to the T5, is really made a big progress so the riding is 
more normal car alike. You don't feel being in a huge transporter anymore. Of course, it's still a big difference even to a, for example, to a big van or something like that. You feel that there's you know, a lot of space behind you, also just from, from the audio feeling. And you have to watch out because you have this long wheelbase that you turn the circles a little bit wider that you don't catch the rear axle and maybe at the pavement or so. But still, due to the very soft and easy steering, the whole driving experience improved here. For example, now I'm here in a roundabout. You see I don't have to turn the steering wheel that much. And you get an immediate response of the steering wheel. The T5 steering wheel rather felt bad, especially in the first angles. And this really has improved now. So it's a lot of easier to drive here with the new T6. That's, I think, is one of the main features from the driving here. Let's now push the, these a little bit harder, going on the motorway. What's missing? Of course, the passenger perspective, because most people will not drive this car, they will be driven. And well, we're starting here now on some uneven surface. I think it's quite good so far but you know recently I've been traveled a lot of time, times in the T5 in the predecessor model and also in the Mercedes V-Class and I've told you earlier so far the V-Class was really way better than the T5 especially with the suspension comfort here in the rear now especially here in the passenger car with the new comfort suspension this might be changing but we're going to experience exactly by that now so I've switched seats now, but I can also test this one here. And what's my verdict? Yes, it is more comfortable than the predecessor version. Of course, it has to be. I mean, it wasn't that task to do that. Can it be compared to the Mercedes V-Class? Yeah, I think so. Maybe there's still a slight difference, but the difference isn't that huge anymore. So that's really fine. And what is also important that the better sound insulation, that is also paying tribute to the well-being here on the inside, especially in the rear department. When driving, you notice immediately the usual car feeling. That is due to the elements that are normally used in Mercedes sedans. For example, the steering wheel is the steering wheel of the Mercedes C-Class. This creates this normal sedan feeling, even though you have a lot of more space in your back. Also, all the other components here in the cockpit have been picked up, not only from the C-Class, but also from the S-Class. If you would like to invest in some additional safety features, you can, for example, order the Distronic Plus system. This helps you keep the distance to the car in front of you and automatically brakes the car. This is a new feature for cars in this segment. As engines, you can pick the 2.2 liter diesel with 136, 163 or 190 horsepower. Prices in Germany start about 43,000 euros. However, this is really just the basic version. Expect a lot more. The setup in this version is four seats in the back for the ideal conversation position. This might be interesting for families traveling with many children, they have lots of space, or passengers who like a lot of space for themselves. If you use this car as a VIP shuttle, for example, and you need to transport more people, you can also fit two seating rows in here, which have three seats each. So plus the two seats in the front, you can transport 
eight people in this car and you still got lots of space in the back, for example, for heavy sports equipment. When opening the trunk, you notice immediately the very low loading sill. So it's easy to put, for example, your sporting equipment like golf bags in here who fit in easily. If you need even more space for your surfboards or bikes, you can take even whole seats out. What I like most about this car are those video control systems. Here you have the rear view and when I switch the gear to driving mode I see the front and I can also switch to 360 degree view where I can see the car like it is a drone and when I start driving I can see the car from above. Of course it is an optical illusion but I think it works very well. At the end of the day, it all comes down to the price. This car starts at 43,000 euros, which is a lot for families, for example, to afford. And you can easily double the price if you put some luxury equipment in it, which is then again more interesting for business customers. So what would you say actually? I think the Volkswagen Transporter, the T6, it has this iconic status and that is already one reason to go for this one. The Mercedes V-Class, however, is definitely the design king in this class and for the first time introduced such harmonic design in this car segment. And I think this was actually a very important factor and will also be a crucial factor when you think about okay VIP transporting service and think their Mercedes will really lead the segment there and well in this kind of style then you will probably also spend more money if you buy it as a private person I think the T6 the transporter will definitely be the best choice because it is really less expensive and I think it's very important in this case and um, as we've already shown it is very flexible now even more flexible than the previous version so I would really think about if I have this business with VRB shuttle then I would go for the V-Class for any private use and going on holiday with the family I would definitely go for the transporter for the Volkswagen so what are your thoughts about these two cars looking forward to see them in the comments and we see us at the next Autogefühl episode thank you <music>